Alright guys, this is a walkthrough tutorial on how to roll back a TP-Link Archer C7 router from DDWRT, uh, the third party firmware, soft, uh, firmware to stock TP-Link firmware. So, um, some people are really scared to do this process. What we're going to try and do is, is give you a set, simple step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this so it's much more approachable um, and you don't end up with a, a router, most importantly, that's unusable. So uh, bear with us. Um, this should take about 10 to 15 minutes and you'll have a restored router and you'll be able to do whatever you like with it. Use the stock firmware or, or even switch to a, another third-party firmware. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go onto uh, the TP-Link TP website um, and you're going to want to grab um, from the download center you're going to want to select uh, the router and you're going to want to um, go in here so I have the C7 pulled up already. Version 2 is my version. You're going to make sure you definitely select the right version here. Um, select the right version. Um, and I have, I went all the way back to um, the first version um, for the V2. Um, you'll see here that in a later version, you know, the United States has got their rules, FCC certification. Um, so once you're upgraded to this version, you supposedly can't downgrade to an earlier version. So um, I, I got this in here, um, the V2, um, because uh, that way if I plan on upgrading uh, to a different um, aftermarket firmware I won't have any problems and um, so that's why I'm sticking with this older version so so the first step you're gonna want to do is, is once you download the file um, you're gonna want to um, extract the uh, the zip and um, what you'll do is you'll have you'll get that that zip file right here um, now with this zip file or with this bin file what you're going to need to do is um, you need to run a command in terminal on it now PC users um, I'm not exactly sure um, what you're supposed to do I think there's a software called raw write which can um, can help you with some of these Linux type stuff um, but I haven't been on a, a PC in years so um, this is uh, really going to help Mac users. So what you want to do is you want to go into terminal. Okay. And I hate dealing with um, you know the location of these files. So um, what I do is is a little shortcut because you can drag and drop files into the terminal window. It's not completely old school like uh, MS DOS is. So um, we'll type in uh, CD space, and then you're gonna drag the folder of the location where your file is. Um, so basically, I like to have uh, the Finder window in the Columns view. And that way you can drag the file and so my file that I need to work on is saved right here um, that was the original zip file it opened up um, into this folder with the file in it so I'm just gonna drag and drop that folder in it oops so we're gonna drag that folder location right there and hit enter and now um, we are in that folder right now Okay, now we can type in um, the code that's going to, uh, or the command that's going to try, uh, create the file that we need to use to put onto the actual router in order to restore it. Um, so the, 
the command line is the following and you can get the exact command in the um, description below the video um, make sure you enter it in exactly as I type it in um, capitals lowercase um, everything should be exactly the same um, the only thing that should be different is the file name you want to make sure that the file name um, that you're using is the same um, is the actual file name that you downloaded um, so here we go and again I'm just going to drag and drop the file in here Okay, so that ran well, perfect. Um, if you did something wrong, you will not see um, the records in, records out. Um, if you did something wrong, you might just see like a, a carrot sitting there or a carrot and a, and a pipe. Um, so records in, records out, um, and bytes transferred, that's good. And then you'll see right up here in the folder that the uh, TP-Link uh, file is created. Okay, so we're good with uh, the terminal window right now. Um, the next step is we need to take this file and we need to get it on the router. Um, so the way I do it is uh, with FileZilla, which is a um, FTP program. Um, there's a, a few other ways you can do it that are uh, focused on the terminal window, um, but I'm not that good with terminal window. Um, and if you're watching this video, you're probably not either, so it's got a little bit more visual um, basis to it. So um, what we're going to do first, um, make sure you, you have the program called um, FileZilla. You can download it online or any FTP program works, but you can download this online for free. Um, so uh, go online and grab that. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to go into the router and... Um, Turn it, uh, turn on uh, the ability for us to access it. So we're going to go into the router, um, type in your router address, log into it, and you're going to want to go to uh, services, I believe, and then scroll down to uh, secure shell. Uh, you want to enable that uh, password login, and then. Um, Go to save, apply settings, and then we're going to do a reboot. Give it a minute or two while it reboots, uh, depending on your model router, will determine how long it takes to uh, reboot. While it's rebooting, what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll get the FileZilla set up and running. So what you're going to want to do is um, type in f s f t p colon forward slash forward slash and the address of your router. The username is going to be root. And the password is going to be your password to log in. So your username is root regardless of what your, your username is when you actually log into your web interface. And then your password is going to be the same as your password. for this to reboot
All right. We're good. All right. Okay. Just wanted to confirm that the secure shell is enabled. It is. So we're going to go back into FileZilla. We have the IP address of the router. Username is root. Password is whatever your password for the router is. And then you're going to put in the port number and connect in. Hit OK. All right. Now, when you first log in, um, you're going to see the TMP up here. This is not where you want to put the file. What we're going to do is we're going to go hit the dot, dot, dot. We're going to hit the dot, dot, dot again. And we're going to get to the actual root folder, um, the base folder. And from there, we have the TMP folder right here. You're going to double click on that. Scroll down, and this is where you're going to upload that tplink.bin file. So you just drag and drop that into there. And it's going to upload, and you have the status on the bottom here. pretty quick. You should have your computer wired um, directly to the router when you're doing this kind of work um, just to avoid any type of <clears throat> data problems. Alright, now that we have that file uploaded Now that we have that file uploaded, you're going to have to go back into Terminal. And we're going to Telnet into the router. And again, if you're uh, on a PC, you can do this. Um, there's Telnetting software. Um, but uh, the Mac has it built right into Terminal. It's really quick and easy. So again, you're going to go right into Terminal. And... Um, you're going to type in, uh, all right, so to, uh, to tell that in, it's real simple. You're just going to type in uh, SSH. Again, we're going to type in root at the IP address of your router. Hit enter. All right. If you get this problem, which is which is rare, um, it's because I've connected into this multiple times um, and it's expecting another key. Um, so uh, you can just um, type in the following. Now we're going to retry to connect. Here we go. Back up and run. Okay. On the final stretch, we're going to type in CD TMP. And then we're going to run that file that we just copied on. Just make sure you have that correct. Um, and if it is, just hit enter. 
No, don't worry, it says not supported. As long as you have that EW, EW, EW running, you're in good shape. Now it's gonna take a minute or two, and once it's completed, we will be back to the original firmware. And now it's just a matter of waiting for it to reboot. Looks like it's rebooted. Back to the original IP address of the stock firmware. All right, and we are back to TP-Link. So you'll just type in the default admin admin login password, and I believe it's system tools factory defaults we're gonna just do um, an extra factory default restore and once that's completed um, you're all set Subscribe to the Outboost Media channel on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter to get the latest tips, tricks, and strategies to help you grow your business online using the same software and techniques we use with startups, Fortune 500 companies, and national brands. Remember, using technology doesn't have to be hard. It should make your life easier. So if it isn't, you need to reevaluate if you're doing it right or if it's even right for you. If you need help with that, contact an Outboost Media consultant. We can review your situation with you and help you get on the right path. Thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you soon.